Okay guys, today we're going to be doing a scene replacement on a 1956 TV Rippler. This was kind of Ham's first motion sign. And as you can see, if you're familiar with these signs at all, what happens to these is the scene inside here, what happens is moisture gets in there and it's, it's basically trapped between two pieces of glass. And what happens is when the moisture gets in there, it attacks the acetate of the scene and you can see wrinkles it and, and basically destroys the inner scene. Uh, it's pretty common, it's, 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 it's hard to find one without that damage, just about all of them have that. If you ever do find one that's just got an original scene, not only buy it, but go play the lottery because it just doesn't happen. But, uh, and then also you can see we got some damage here on this lower plate and then some damage here. So we'll, we'll be replacing this too. But the main thing I want to show you today is how this comes apart. Um, obviously already I've removed the cover from the mechanism and how you do that. There's just, there's two screws down here that you loosen and then there's two screws here and here and then the whole lid will come off what did I do with the other? What? okay but the whole lid will lift off so to disassemble this is fairly fairly simple but if you haven't done it before you, you're thinking how in the world does that come out of there so here's what you do you put it down on its face there's four screws these four little black screws those got to come out first they come out pretty easily Doctor, you should have your snap-on drill to make this. Well, this is such a tiny. Okay. Do it by hand? I do it by hand because I, I'm always a little cautious of the power tool because sometimes it, it, it's a little bit too strong. And again, these, these things are 60-some years old, and, and they're not quite as, you know, they're, they're a little brittle. So I, I like to do it by hand just because of the power one sometimes can be a little bit too much. Okay. Get those four screws out and then you see on each side there's additional tiny little Phillips screws. There's eight of them total and those also have to come out and they come out rather easily. And what I'll do is pause it and we'll come back after you take these out. Okay I've taken the two screws on each side out so then what you do is just kind of hold it in place. Put your hand around here in this Flip it upside down. Look at that. And it comes right off. And the reason they call this the TV box Rippler is because it's gray casing kind of resembles a, Looks an like old a TV. TV. Mm -hmm. And most of these have a date stamp or something, isn't it? Generally 1956. Have you found others? Yep. Date I have not. No. Nope. Wow. Yep. Okay. So once you get the, the framework out of the plastic case, again, put it on its face and you'll find four Phillips screws here on the side. Those also have to come out. Like so. Okay. Extra long thread on that one. Mm -hmm. Of course, when you're filming it, it's mm. can't ever go right. Please release me, let me go. Mm, go Bert. Go out for crying. We're gonna pause this and come back. Okay, now that we're done screwing around, what are we gonna do, Steve? All right, now you can lift out what we call the lower logo plate. And that's reverse on glass, right? Reverse that paint is reverse on glass to yep. the back. And obviously this is broken, so we'll replace that. But a lot of times, another thing which you'll see here, you see these little lines here? What they do originally is they put a piece of cardboard on there, and I believe the reason for it was they didn't want the Ham's logo quite as bright through here. And so, of course, over time that tape gets old, and that's what causes these lines. Just like self-adhesive strips on a reverse on glass or cooler sign, a lot of times those where the adhesive was applied, it'll take the glass yep. off. Yep, exactly right. So yeah, and then this is just, it's got like a little 
channel, channel type deal, and that comes right off. And now these were made by, and you can see down here, Price Brothers, 1956, isn't it? Yep. yep. Okay, then you take this little bar out, and then all you got to do is tap it a couple times. Voila. All right. So as I was explaining earlier, this is basically trapped between two pieces of glass. The front glass is just plain glass. And we'll get this apart. Wow. And you can see how that actually almost etches into that glass. And see how the scene is shrunk here? With that moisture comes contraction. And this one, this one isn't, this one isn't too bad, but a lot of times it, the, it, they stink. <laughs> and I don't know what it is, if it's the, the ink or what it is, that you might be well, you know, you can maybe smell it a little bit, but this one's not oh, as bad yeah. as, yeah. Yeah, yep, I can smell it, it. It can be pretty bad, so if, if your wife is fussy, maybe do this in a garage. My wife can smell a bug fart, so I would not attempt exactly. this. Yeah, yeah, in, you, would, you, you, would be, you would be in trouble. And two, where's the inner part of this, Steve? I want to show people. Okay, uh, yes. Oh. Here, okay. All right, so now, all right, this is just plain glass, as explained. This design that is silk screened on here. See that line background? Recognize that from the scenerama? Okay, when you're cleaning this glass, this side here you can scrape and do whatever you want because the glass is on the other side. But do not damage this in any way because if you do, you're not going to have any motion because it's those vertical lines that do the trick. Mm -hmm. So the other side you'll want to clean before you apply the, or where? Well, you want to clean both sides. Okay. And what I use, what I use is I just take a razor blade and, and I just, you know, start the process of, of, of scraping that stuff off. And it, it comes off fairly easy. And like I say, this side here isn't bad at all, as you can see. And then of course, same way here, you can just, it's, it's kind of a messy job, but obviously it has to be done. But you can see how that, I mean, it, and I mean this, is, this is that old and it's still liquid. Mike Lowe would approve. Yeah. Let's see how this, it comes off quite easily with a razor blade. And then, like I say, the, the little tape here, what they do, they use that for is to hold the two together. And that's what I, I, I do tape them back together yep. when I put them together. So basically, yeah, the main thing now is just clean the glass. We'll be back after this gets cleaned. While Steve's over there cleaning off the glass, I'd just like to show you, it's uh, kind of fascinating. A lot of times these 1956 Ripplers have the dates that they were serviced written nicely on the inside. And you can see this one, October 12th of 1959, the back glass, R might be reverse, and a new motor. And then check it out. New ballast. I don't know what they wrote those with, but it must have been the servicemen that put those in there to document that. Another cool little thing is when they spray painted this blue, this blue border around here, evidently whoever was working on it, they took these off the rack before they were dry. And just about every one of them that I've ever seen have got the guy that worked on the signs fingerprints on the inside. <laughs> so they must have, he must have grabbed it like this and the paint was still wet, but this, like I say, that's, that's the fingerprints of the guy that, that built this sign. When you're cleaning this glass, be really careful because this edge of this glass is quite sharp and, it, and it's pretty easy to, to cut your finger and it hurts like hell, so be really careful when you're doing that. When you're cleaning this glass, like I say, you can't have the front glass clean enough. Like I say, I just take a razor blade and you can kind of hold it up and see any marks on it. This now, obviously, you have to be a little more careful because, like I said, this is designed. So, you know, obviously, use a razor blade. You can use the razor blade up here, but be very careful. Do not scrape any anything down on the bottom. And would you explain also, Steve, the, uh, the front glass, the other glass, both pieces being bone dry? Oh, gosh, yeah. You, and I say, once you whatever you use for glass cleaner I, this is what i use here it's called sprayway and it's some pretty good stuff um one thing that you got to really really be watch 
and I sometimes will even even leave them sit overnight because if there's any moisture any wetness at all on on this it, it'll wick through and and you when you get the scene in there you'll have spots water spots in the in the scene and it and, and I say and it will not dry you have to take it you have to physically take it apart in order to get that off okay Steve you just cleaned the other side but tell us about uh, a customer that called you and their sign had no motion. Yes, I had sold I had sold him a scene, and uh, he called me. He wasn't wasn't too far away. I think Owatonna, I believe. And uh, he called me up and he says, "Hey, so I got the sign all taken apart, cleaned up, put back together." He says, "Your scene looks great." He says, "But now I don't have any motion." And I says, "Well, you probably you know make sure that your your scroll is operating." Oh yeah, that's working in. And uh, and I. Said, he all checked all the boxes that everything was working. And I thought, well, there's no reason why it shouldn't work. And he said, well, he said, I'm, I'm fairly close to you. He said, I'm just going to run it over. So he brings the sign to me, and <laughs> I open it up, and I noticed that the back glass was was completely clean. It was you know, a plain piece, piece of glass. What he had done is he had thought that this was, was a part of the, the dirtiness and he went ahead and, and scraped this entire design off. And so, needless to say, then he didn't have, he did not have any motion. So instead of buying one replacement seam, he had to buy both. He, he bought the back glass also. Once in a while, you'll run into one at, at, at that this back glass is so deteriorated that you can't get it clean. And uh, this one, I think, is gonna be one of those. Yeah, it's just it's, this is just not going to work. We're going to have to replace this back glass. It's just it's just coming off. All right. Well, yeah. there you see it live. Well, at, least you, at least at least at least you can see how it comes apart anyway. Yep. Exactly. So we hope this is informative. And what you do, Steve? Do we? Since we're going to have to do that, you just both scenes. One you apply to this one. Is yep. that correct? Okay. So when you get your get your new back glass, what you do? Yeah. See how that that's going to show through. Okay, so what you do when you get your new scene is you put your back one down, lay your scene on here, put your front glass on, and then what I do is I just take three little strips of tape and put them on those edges, and then you just slide the assembly right back into that channel, just like we take the, took it out, Yep. and you're ready to go. Hope this is informative and helpful. Uh, Steve Miner, Barry Travis, the boys from I Buy Old Beer on the 56 TV Rippler from Hams. Yeah, Be sure to uh, like and subscribe and all that stuff, and we appreciate you collecting old beer stuff.